Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar, Modernization of the First Generation Systems, Migrating from PostgreSQL. My name is Diogo and I'll be your moderator today. Before we begin, just a few logistical reminders. Today's discussion is being recorded and you are currently in a listen-only mode. You may submit questions throughout the session using the Q&A function in the lower right corner of your console. We will answer everyone's questions after the presentation. After today's webinar, you will receive an email with a recording. If you wish to contact us, please email us at team at singlestar.com. So let me introduce our speakers today. We have Sukh Sanhar and Rakesh Put Putaswami. Welcome, Suki. You now have the floor. That's great. Thank you so much, uh, Diogo. Um, and hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we've got a great uh, presentation, and as you'd expect from all, uh, from all pre-sales, webinars a, a really good demonstration um, which is going to be run by my partner in crime uh, on this webinar uh, Rakesh um, I'll get Rakesh to introduce himself uh, in a couple of minutes um, as I said we've got a tag team approach to the webinar I'm going to do a short presentation probably about 20 minutes talk a bit about the technology talk about how we uh, compare it um, with uh, uh, with PostgreSQL I'm going to talk a bit about the market, share share some insights with uh, with where we see the database market right now, the move and shift um, uh, into the cloud and and hybrid environments. Um, we'll talk a bit about how do you migrate uh, PostgreSQL in the presentation. There are some um, uh, technical elements that you uh, have to be aware of. They're quite uh, rudimentary, quite simple. And then Rakesh is going to go in and uh, and share with you uh, how that's done with a uh, short presentation. So about a 50-50 split. Um, I'll take about 20-25 minutes and then Rakesh will take 20-25 minutes on the demonstration. As I said, um, as Diogo said, my name is Suki Sandhar. Uh, I look after the international pre-sales teams uh, for the Client Technical Services Organization. Um, Rakesh, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you, Suki. Hello, all. My name is Rakesh. Uh, I'm working as Enterprise Solution Engineer at Single Store, uh, uh, mainly uh, responsible for uh, helping customer and solution architecture design uh, here. I also uh, run and execute the POCs in international region, mainly on EMEA regions. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Rakesh. So we're gonna we're gonna jump into the presentation. We're gonna talk about uh, cloud data evolution, what we're seeing in the market, our experience. Um, I'm quite lucky. I get to see many different projects across many different industries uh, across the region. So we I've picked out some threads of of common um, uh, input from uh, from from each of these each of these uh, engagements. We're going to have a look at the practical approach to migration, and then Rakesh is going to do the demo demonstration. We're going to finally finish off with some questions right at the end. If anybody wants to submit questions, we'll either try and get to them right at the end, or uh, or if we run out of time, we'll try and get back to you with uh, with uh, an email directly. So I think this uh, this is a great slide to start with. Um, uh, I think there should be no surprises to anybody who's uh, listening to this. Um, the, the demands for data are growing inside every business. Um, uh, that's due to the level of complexity, variety, the volume of data that's being generated. I'm going to share with you some case studies uh, which show how fast this, uh, this data, the volume of data that organizations want to use is increasing. Uh, businesses, businesses do want to uh, drive insights, they want to drive actions, they want to do those in real time. And to be able to do that, they need to see the data. They need to be working with the most current, up-to-date, fresh understanding of what's going on in their business. And of course, we've got this growing uh, uh, team of people inside of all businesses now, uh, within the data teams, within the BI teams, for uh, data scientists, machine learning, and AI, who want to use that data, who want to use this data, the same data that everybody else is viewing, 
to be able to derive actions and make uh, make predictions and be preemptive with uh, with some of those actions as well. So these are the growing demands that we're seeing across every organization, regardless of, uh, of industry and regardless of region, actually. But if we have a look at the technology stack and, and what's been put in place to be able to to be able to uh, um, cater for the for this uh, for this growing demand, it's actually not able to do what it needs to do. And what I mean by that is we've got a, a tiered architecture of technology. That tiered architecture of technology allows data to be ingested, but by the time it gets to the analytics team, by the time it gets to the people who want to see this data and drive actions, it's already stale. And one of the main reasons for that is this multi-tiered architecture where systems are, the, the, the systems that are generating this data are depositing this data into, into operational data stores, they're generating this data and depositing it, depositing it into um, uh, S3 style of environments. That data then is moved, manipulated, and transformed using ETL style processes uh, and moved into another level of database. That database typically is like an OLTP database, an analytics database. And then that's when the people who want to view and use this data get get access to that data. The interesting thing about that multi-tiered, multi-architecture, multi-technology stack is every time you move the data from one level of technology, from one layer of technology to the other, you're adding, you're adding latency. So by the time the people kind of get to see this data, that by the time the people that want to drive these actions um, uh, uh, get that data, it's already stale, it's already old. A minimum, a minimum level of latency we've seen uh, between these kind of layers is one hour. So by the time it gets it gets into the into the uh, analytics database, it's already three hours, um, maybe three days old in uh, in some examples that we've seen. So to be able to scale this application, this 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 kind of end tier uh, uh, architecture to be able to cater for these for these demands, you need you need people, you need separate teams, you need different understanding, different skills for each of these different technologies. And that adds to the to the cost and complexity of being able to scale this multi-tier architecture to do what uh, what organizations want to do. And all, all organizations want to make sure now that everybody in the teams, everybody outside of the business, partners, is viewing the same information. They don't want different views, different versions, um, uh, of the data, they want to make sure there's a consistency of viewing that data. If we have a look at what organisations have done to, to to be able to cater for this uh, for this for this for this demand using the tools and technologies that are in place, but specifically uh, kind of databases that are in place, we've uh, we've summarised what's been going on over the over the last kind of 20 years or so by looking at these kind of three broad buckets. Uh, first generation, second generation, and now where we find ourselves kind of third generation of cloud data revolution. The first generation kind of in the 1999, uh, 2010 uh, uh, timeframe, we really saw a lot of organizations taking the existing databases, the existing on-prem kind of databases that were in place. These were multi-purpose relational SQL databases, kind of single node uh, architecture of databases and moving those and retrofitting those into the cloud. Um, some great things uh, came from that kind of, kind of first generation of databases. There's a fantastic understanding of SQL. Uh, everybody knows um, uh, the, the reasons why uh, relational databases are great. You don't have to replicate massive amounts of data, you can use relationships to bind data together inside of a database, which is highly optimized way of storing uh, uh, data. We then saw uh, this kind of second generation, <coughs> excuse me, um, second era of database technologies that were coming out uh, and being used. And this was really the, the move away from SQL. Um, uh, into more specialized kind of data stores. And that's kind of 
uh, you know, that, that era we saw many, many different organizations use a best of breed approach based on the type of workload, the behavior of the use case. So organizations taking an in-memory database, taking a time series database, um, uh, uh, taking a database specifically for uh, uh, analytics. And what that meant was there was, you know, this, this adoption of many different kind of database technologies. Um, and especially with the NoSQL type of uh, technology that we're putting in place, a rethink, a redesign of, uh, of those databases into this new environment, which, which caused and creates project and business risk. And then you've also got to kind of try and understand well, what's the value of, uh, of doing that. Reskilling, retooling a whole organization, a whole team of people. Now what we see this kind of you know third generation of style of databases, some great vendors have come into this kind of uh, uh, a new new kind of SQL database world, where these database technologies have been built for real time, have been built to ingest you know vast amounts of information directly into into the data store. They're multi-cloud. Uh, many many organisations that took uh, technology decisions to kind of go with one particular tech, uh, uh, cloud technology um, uh, are now moving away from that. They want multi-tier, but also everybody understands that uh, even moving forward in the short term, medium term, that this environment is going to be a hybrid environment where organizations for different reasons, either regulatory or otherwise, are still wanting to keep some level of data uh, local, but then to be able to kind of use this uh, this multi-cloud kind of model as well and also organizations want to standardize and rationalize on this uh, on this kind of architecture whereby they want to be able to have a multimodal database where different styles of of um, uh, of workload of data can land inside of that inside of that database so not only kind of um, key value pair style of, uh, of, 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 of database, uh, time series, geo, um, and all of this data then is able to be uh, searched and used for, uh, for data and agree applications. That is where single store is, this kind of third generation of, uh, of technology and architecture. Before we talk about, about more about single store, I wanna go back to this, uh, this webinar. We're talking about uh, first generation uh, migration of, uh, of Postgres onto single store. Let's have a let's have a you know uh, a look at at a high level view of what uh, of what Postgres SQL is uh, is all about. The great thing about Postgres, like a lot of the SQL relational databases that were uh, that were put in place at the time, it's an object relational database. Um, there's a great optimization, as I said, uh, in terms of storage of data. There's a recognition, there's an ANSI SQL standard, so people and organizations and skill sets have been built up. There's a programming language, there's an understanding of, uh, of how uh, databases are viewed and stored um, and described. They've been extended so that different data types can be, uh, can be added into, into these databases. JSON and Geodata has been added over time to uh, to SQL databases. They are single node, which means it's very good for, for, for vertical scalability. You can throw more kind of hardware at the problem uh, uh, to be able to get more out of them. Um, and they're very good for kind of point selects, you know, quite, quite performant on single selects, very good for OLTP style of, of, uh, of, uh, of data workload and behavior. The performance typically kind of execute, executing thousands of queries over, over tens or thousands of updates per second. You can scan kind of millions of rows uh, and manage those style of size of databases up to about a terabyte on a single node because that's the architecture. So some, some, some goodness uh, 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 and well understood style of technology. So why migrate? You want to migrate because it's the, the architecture that was put in place, that single node architecture, is not the new style, cloud native style of architecture that's been put in place. So for scalability reasons, where 
there's different databases, uh, uh, different analytics tools who want to slice and dice this data. You want the ability to be able to scale up and scale down uh, access uh, to this data. Uh, you want to be able to use cloud scalability. Um, uh, that style of architecture that was put in place, that single node style of architecture isn't very good at, at scaling up horizontally across the available uh, uh, infrastructure that's required. Data sizes are growing, obviously. Organizations want to ingest data directly into this, uh, into this database world to be able to react, manipulate, and use that data uh, in, uh, in real time. As more and more organizations are using uh, this data is becoming kind of critical to the business, those high availability needs uh, are growing. Um, there's got to be that, that, that criticality of uh, uh, element to, this, uh, to the usage and the availability of that data. Uh, no longer can, they, can anybody afford to uh, a single node to go down without being able to use this data and bring this data into usage uh, very quickly in real time. Uh, and obviously the speed, the, the speed of execution, the, uh, the ability to execute and get this information much quicker, much faster that, than, than what's been made uh, available in the past. And these are the requirements that are driving people to, uh, to migrate. So let's get on to single store. Um, single store is this kind of new style of SQL database. We're a, we're a, we're a highly distributed cloud native relational SQL database. Um, we've, got, we've got some patented technology uh, which only, only single store have in place. Um, we are cloud native, we're highly durable, and we are ANSI SQL compliant. On, on, the, on the data side, we're a unified uh, 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 database. This means that you can store um, uh, as a first-class citizen, JSON data can be mapped and stored in terms of tables. You can add to that kind of um, uh, time series data, geospatial data, uh, streaming data can be added. And all of that data then you can run uh, a full text search uh, over that data. So it's a unified uh, uh, database. We are highly optimized for real time. We map and ingest data in parallel into a highly distributed uh, data partitions. We're lock free, which means that um, uh, during high concurrency times, we don't have to replicate data to enable a, uh, an enhanced customer experience. We provide a lock-free style of architecture. We have multi-version currency control at a row level. As data is being streamed and pushed into, into directly into the database, we're not locking people from looking at that data and, and, and executing SQL commands, slicing and dicing that, that data. So we're providing a superior uh, customer experience for, for, uh, for these kind of data-hungry applications and dashboards. Um, we have a highly kind of specialized and compressed storage mechanism. There's really kind of three layers of, uh, uh, of data uh, storage inside of single store. Um, there, is, there is memory. Um, we have tables that are pinned uh, directly into memory. We have optimized uh, storage in terms of com store uh, in SSD. And then we have object storage, which, uh, which we use for, uh, for this kind of uh, bottomless approach that we have to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to data storage. So we, so we have those kind of three levels of storage that we've put in place. Moving on quite quickly, um, you know, what is the, what is, what is the relationship uh, between um, a single store and this kind of SQL and C-SQL world? So as I've said before, we, we, we're, we're, we're a highly distributed relational database. We're wire compliant with, uh, with any driver that you use with MySQL or MariaDB. Uh, regularly on projects, we have organizations that just kind of reuse their drivers to get access uh, into single store and push data into, into single store. We, have, we do have our own uh, uh, ODBC um, uh, driver, which, uh, which organizations can use. But we are kind of wire compatible uh, with, with MySQL. 
um, and we and that means there's hundreds of clients and drivers available. We do have a fantastic match whilst you're migration, mi migrating in terms of data types. Um, we have a great match in terms of the functions that you can map over. There is, there is a small kind of discrepancy sometimes because of the way we're, we're distributing and charting data. There is, a, there is this kind of small difference, uh, around 5% difference in terms of the match of some of the functionality, but I'll talk a bit about how we, uh, how we uh, negate that, uh, that kind of top 5% if we need to kind of redevelop uh, some functionality inside of single store. So you can be up and running in minutes. There is a really kind of easy approach to doing this and, and Rakesh is gonna talk about that in, uh, in the demonstration. Uh, before I go into details about how we, how we migrate data, how we migrate uh, MySQL uh, my um, style of databases into single store, I wanted to kind of quickly talk about a case study uh, Monday.com is a fantastic case study. They uh, they run all of their kind of customer analytics about what's going on in their business uh, on top of single store. They moved because they had this kind of multi-tier approach to doing this. The kind of you know this this uh, this this um, uh, stack that they had in terms of Postgres SQL and Elasticsearch doing what what they wanted to do, but it wasn't scalable. The amount of uptake of their business have been fantastically successful, but they want to be able to have hundreds and thousands of people looking at these kind of customer analytics of what's going on. It would have been too costly to try and scale up this, this kind of multi-technology, uh, multi-layered architecture, uh, and they replaced it and migrated off of uh, PostgreSQL directly into single store. There's a link here that you can have a look at a great write-up about what monday.com have done. With, uh, with single store and migrated into a, uh, a managed service um, uh, approach with, uh, with single store. I'm gonna go back to some of the practical approaches to migration, talk about some of the, some of the technicalities uh, in, which, uh, in which to do this. I talked a bit about the, uh, the style of database uh, single store is. We're a combined, a unified uh, database. What does that mean? We, we are perfectly able to be able to uh, ingest data, provide the functionality of a transactional database, but also because of the architecture we have, we're, we're able to provide uh, a OLTP style of database as well. So we're, we're a combined uh, in-memory row store for transactional workloads and a optimized column store dispatch uh, database. So we're, we're, we're a combined, a unified database whereby you can use single store for a combined OLTP and analytic style of, of, uh, of use case. And that's our kind of sweet spot. As I said, we're, we're leveraging the power of a distributed SQL style of architecture, something kind of quite well understood. Um, but whilst you're migrating, there are a few things that uh, that uh, that you need to take note of the architects uh, need to make some simple kind of design choices and this is this is all around how we distribute data how queries are executed and how that data is stored across this highly distributed uh, uh, single store architecture so if we if we go into the next level of detail uh, in terms of the architecture the technology we have this kind of two tier architecture uh, inside a single store again if you've ever worked with kind of uh, Hadoop style of architectures, this should be uh, this should be very familiar with uh, with with any architect that understands that that style of technology. We have this kind of frontier of of aggregator nodes. Uh, these are really kind of router nodes. They uh, they have metadata. They uh, they 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 aggregators are where clients connect to. Uh, SQL is ingested. And the aggregator nodes are responsible for distributing that SQL across this kind of second tier of, uh, of, uh, of architecture of leaf nodes. The leaf nodes are, are the nodes that are actually responsible for the data and the execution of SQL. So if, a, if, a, if, a, if, a, if an aggregator receives a SQL statement, which has to be spread over a, a, a number of leaf nodes, the aggregators understand 
where that data is stored because of the metadata that's held inside the aggregators. The aggregator is responsible for distribution of that SQL to those leaf nodes. Those leaf nodes are responsible for execution. All the data is sent back to the aggregator node. The aggregator node brings back the, uh, the data that's required and then sends that data back up to the originating uh, requesting application. So, the, so that's that's the kind of the, the the architecture that we have inside of inside a single store. Interestingly, uh, for durability, uh, these leaf nodes work in pairs. So there's a there's a there's a master partition and a backup partition. The backup partition um, is responsible for a backup of the of the data that is held in a, in 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 another partition for a leaf node, and they work in pairs. So if 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 the data is not available in a particular leaf, then the the backup partition takes over. So you see very little in terms of downtime when uh, when something occurs to to one particular leaf node. So these these leaf nodes work in replicas, uh, and a leaf node a leaf node can be promoted to a master uh, partition uh, uh, in the event of uh, in the event of some downtime that uh, that can go on. Let's talk a bit about something critical uh, about the distribution of data, which is how data is sharded, distributed across this architecture. Um, uh, single store uh, will automatically, if no sharding uh, keys are, uh, are provided, uh, single store will automatically try and choose um, a sharding key, and typically that sharding key will be the primary the primary key. Um, but you've got to be you've got to you've got to be Quite mindful about how data is uh, is sharded, and then in this example, you can see we've got a table uh, uh, created, which is orders. Uh, we've got multiple different attributes inside of that inside of that table, and actually, you can see the shard keys made up of order key and customer key, which actually is a is a is a is a good is a is a great example here. The way the data is distributed is we create a hash index of the shard key. And we divide it by the number of partitions that are available. So you get every single time when a SQL statement is executed, uh, you the, the the system knows which uh, data partition, which leaf node to go to go to as a result of being having to execute that uh, that SQL. Sharding data is uh, is critical. Um, uh, what you want to do is you want to move with the natural grain uh, of the database. You want to make sure that that uh, not all SQL commands are highly distributed uh, and sent across, you know, fanned out to every single every single leaf node. That creates uh, that creates a very inefficient way of executing that SQL. You really want to kind of um, uh, keep the sharding key simple. Um, uh, uh, you want to you want to try and look for keeping kind of joins of data. Uh, uh, local. There are other ways of doing that in using kind of something that we call reference tables, which are which are provided and and distributed across all of the leaf nodes. Um, but you want to be careful not to distribute or skew the data across all of the available leaf nodes um, too much, uh, because you really want to kind of high have a high level of ability to execute that SQL locally within the uh, within the within the leaf nodes. Um, and if we look at how that would uh, that would look, well, really, if you have a look at this select statement, it's a really good select statement. Select A, join B, where color A, uh, uh, where A dot color equals B dot color. <coughs> it's a great example of where you want to use your understanding of how the how the data is going to be uh, is going to be used is going to be selected and try and group. Uh, by color in this example, and try and get that data locally in each partition, in each uh, in each leaf, um, so that, that 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 those those joins are local. We don't stop distributed joins, um, uh, sharded or otherwise, uh, and you can do that. But you've got to you've got to remember that actually there is a hit that you would take uh, uh, when you when you do something like that. I'm going to move on quite quickly. Uh, some other considerations that. Uh, that you have to understand when you're when you're migrating. There are different ways in which you can do this. Uh, application considerations, you know, is this is this 
migration going to happen whilst the system is up and running 24 by 7? Um, in which case you can use replication <coughs> from single star and uh, Rakesh is going to talk about that and demonstrate that. Um, there's a tool and capability inside a single star called single star replication, which re which uh, which enables you to do uh, uh, synchronization and migration uh, ongoing whilst uh, whilst running in in a parallel mode uh, to Postgres. We do allow migration, obviously, during uh, downtime as well, during maintenance windows, where you can kind of export out whatever data you have, uh, copy over the tables, the files, the data, and ingest those in parallel into uh, into uh, into into single store. And actually, that's what somebody like uh, uh, Monday.com did, did did do. You can also use kind of tools and technologies that are available for organisations to use, kind of ETL tools. We're going to talk about how you can do this also running uh, running pipelines as well if you want to run etl and manipulation of data um i talked about the con some considerations uh all of the data types we've got 100 percent compatibility with uh, mysql so all of the data types can be uh, can be migrated as is um on the built-in functions uh we do have this we do have this uh you know this this uh, kind of five percent, which uh, which we may, might not be able to uh, import directly, uh, but we do have this concept of user-defined functions, where you can write uh, anything that's not directly transferable into 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 single store. And with that, I'm going to hand over to Rakesh, who's going to talk a bit about the demonstration that he's uh, put in place for you to see uh, around migration replication. But also talk a bit about the uh, single store editor, uh, which uh, which he is running. Rakesh, would you like to take over for the next two slides and the demonstration? Yeah, thank you, Suki. Yeah, so uh, with demonstration, I'm going to talk about uh, single store managed service, right? So how easily you can spin up a cluster within a minutes. Uh, without any any hiccups or uh, or any any major um, installation steps, right? So I'm going to demonstrate how to easily create a cluster and easily uh, how how you can um, you know visualize uh, the dashboards, uh, basic monitoring using Single Store Studio. Single Store Studio is uh, again part and parcel of the product uh, where you can do a basic monitoring. Uh, you can uh, you can create a pipeline, can load the data, you can monitor the pipelines, and you can monitor the memory usage of each of the nodes, what each of the hosts look like. And there's also a SQL editor where you can, where you can write the SQL queries and uh, write the stored procedure, etc. I'm going to demonstrate that as well. And uh, uh, talking about uh, pipelines right there are two methods where uh, we are going to demonstrate uh, the migration from postgresql to single store one is through uh, the csv files uh, which are in and in, in the cloud repositories uh, i'm going to use s3 cloud repository to bring the data in from um, postgresql uh, csv files to single store and another uh, approach is uh, replicate Right before going to uh, replicate, I just want to highlight about uh, the pipelines. Right, uh, single store pipeline is a is an inbuilt database feature that natively ingests the real time data as well as uh, the bulk data uh, which is coming from the files uh, from any of the repositories. As a built in component of the database, right, pipelines can extract transform and load the external data and without the need of any third party tools uh, or any middleware tools and pipeline is uh, you know very robust scalable highly performant and supports fully distributed workloads and these pipelines are ideal for scenarios where uh, data from a supported source must be ingested and processed in a real time 
and this is also a very good alternative uh, for uh, third party tools or basic to do a basic etl operation that mu that must be executed as as fast as possible so the traditional long running process such as overnight batch jobs can be eliminated by using the uh, the pipelines so next uh, just to give a glimpse of the replicate replicate is um, uh, as, a, as, a, as a tool, as a third party tool, but it comes along with the product. Uh, it's as if we call that as a single store replicate, which helps in pulling the data from various heterogeneous data sources or legacy databases into single store. See, uh, replicate acts as a man in the middle between two databases. Uh, replicate does support a lot of uh, databases now, which is in the market, which can be uh, MySQL, uh, Postgres, Teradata, SAP HANA, Salesforce, MongoDB, and and most most of the databases it has it has been supported Redshift, right? So it is very easy to connect to the source database. Just have to give some uh, connection details of source and the destination and what uh, the filter conditions and some mapper conditions to map between the tables uh, which you are going to uh, do the migration. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate how uh, how the replicate is um, is going to work and how we can uh, actually replicate the data from PostgreSQL into single store. Okay, let's get started with uh, the demonstration. Let me take over and uh, present my screen. Uh, can you see my screen? We can, yeah, we can. Thank you, Rakesh. Yeah, so this is the uh, portal at portal.singlestore.com. This is where you can sign in, um, sign in into uh, the portal, and you can use our free credits to uh, try and test our product. Uh, it's very easy. It's very simple to create a uh, create a cluster, right? So this is how it looks when you log into this portal. Uh, just have to register, give some email details, and you can use the uh, the credits which are uh, provided by Single Store. I'm just going to click on uh, Create Cluster here. So it's going to take me to a page uh, uh, where you have to fill in some details of database. Uh, you can give the cluster name. Uh, I've given my name here. So there is a different plans uh, available. You can you can choose anything. Uh, uh, on the on the plan where you are uh, when you log into the database i i do have plan of uh, these two proof of concept and on demand you can also also choose on demand and cancel anytime i'm just going to uh, use a proof of concept and uh, we are available in all three major cloud provider right we are available in aws gcp and azure uh, and and if you see there's another option called cluster size if you see all these are the options available to select uh, uh, to spin up your cluster s0 has uh, you know only one node and if you see s00 s0 s1 s00 is just a cluster in a box one machine uh, where uh, your master aggregator and leaf node resides in a single node it's a single node architecture so s2 and s4 is like you have you'll have uh, two leaves in s2 and in s4 you'll have four leaves with these configurations Right, so I'll just select any one of the uh, size and and then go and click next. So you have to set the cluster password. You can generate a strong password by clicking here. I'll just give some random password now. And uh, there's some access restriction um, uh, feature as well. You can uh, always uh, restrict the access uh, by specifying the IP addresses, which is a recommended option. Or you can just allow access from anywhere. And for now, I'm just allowing access from anywhere and uh, automatically expire this cluster after uh, four hours. You, there's multiple options. I'll just say never. Okay, once you create a cluster, when you click on the cluster it just uh, starts deploying the cluster if you see the progress so one percent is uh, started deploying so once you uh, once you all once you once the hundred percent deployment is complete then you can easily spin up the studio 
So already I had one of the cluster deployed for this uh, demonstration. So I'll just go to that. Uh, this is the studio uh, page uh, looks like. Uh, here you, it's a dashboard where you can do a basic cluster health monitoring. So you can see this cluster is a Postgres webinar cluster as a seven node cluster with the three databases already created. And you can also uh, uh, see the you can also see the cluster usage here. What is the total memory usage? What the disk usage? And what are the pipelines uh, you're currently running? And what are the databases you have uh, in the in the uh, in the cluster? So if you go on to a nodes uh, tab, there you'll see the complete details of the nodes in this cluster. As Suki was telling about the architecture, uh, this is how the the cluster looks now. So it has one master aggregator, two, two child aggregators, and four leaf nodes. And you can see how much CPU it has been consumed and memory utilization and disk utilization. And if you go to a databases, I do have uh, one database called attack database. So when I click that, you can see all the objects available here. Um, you can see the tables if you if there are any views uh, views you can see the procedures functions aggregators i don't have any procedures or functions created the pipelines there are four pipelines which is running now currently and if you notice there is a uh, if you notice this uh, tables right this table objects so you can see uh, something called column store and if you create you can also create a row a row store table also in that case the storage will become a row store here all the column all the tables are column store and one of the table here is a reference table so he was mentioning uh, about a reference table if you see this uh, if you see um, uh, r uh, symbol here and uh, uh, and the reference in the storage it means that this table has been created as a reference table and reference table is a a small dimension kind of a table to store the master data or uh, the table which where the data is not frequently changing and when very important uh, thing to observe here is if you see the tables hmm, here you can see the table compression the table is highly compressed you can see almost 70 to 80 percent of the data uh, has been compressed and this is this is the the compression ratio looks like almost 84 percent has been compressed and if you see the events table which has 10 million records has just taking 732 mb of uh, of disk to store and uh, and keep it so with the 72 percent of uh, table compression let me quickly go to sql editor now uh, i have a couple of uh, scripts to run uh, i already have a database called attack database let me quickly drop that database and recreate it again so to create a database, you just say create database, database name, and it creates a database, and we'll use the tables. Uh, I'm giving some, uh, I'm, I'll create some DDLs here, tables here, all are column store table. When you create a table, if you see a keyword called using clustered column store, then it means this table will be created as a column store table. If you say uh, create reference table uh, table name and give all the data types, then it will create a reference table for you. And I'll create a couple of tables. Yep, I've created a couple of uh, almost all six, seven tables here. So now the important part is uh, when you do a PostgreSQL migration, right? So uh, Suki was uh, talking about copying your uh, PostgreSQL, running the loop, copy the use the copy command and extract the data and uh, dump it as a CSV file uh, anywhere. It can be anywhere. It can be just your uh, file system or it can be you can put that data into any of the cloud repositories like S3 azure or even uh, google cloud google cloud storage as well so for this demonstration i have uh, taken some dumps of data and i've kept it in s3 location so where uh, now i am pulling now i'll try to pull the data from s3 into single store 
right so this is one of the approach uh, many of our customers uh, has used this kind of approach to migrate uh, the data from postgresql into single store and uh, monday.com is one of the example so if you see this uh, if you see this uh, script here uh, there's a create or replace pipeline and pipeline name you have, you'll have to give while creating the pipeline and the important part is load data s3 so you now i'm specifying i'm i'm telling the system that i'm trying to load the data from s3 if you are uh, if you are uh, uh, loading the data from azure you'll have to tell azure blob or gcp and i'm giving the bucket details here this is my s3 bucket details and uh, you'll also have to specify the configuration and credential details you might need aws access key id and secret access key uh, for that particular bucket and directly i'm i'm, I'm instructing a, a script here to ingest the data into table uh, table name which is events right uh, you can also uh, you can also ingest that data directly into table as one option another option is you can ingest the data into a stored procedure so when you ingest the data into stored procedure uh, if you want to do some transformations and if you want to do some deduplication sanitization of the data you can ingest the data into stored procedure do all the logics uh, inside stored procedure before ingesting into the target table and that's that's uh, that is uh, how a lot of our customer is utilizing uh, for the transformation eliminating you know uh, third party tools and uh, etl tools so i'll just click go ahead and create this pipeline now uh, and i'm going to start the pipeline so i have similarly i have uh, created pipelines for all other tables so that the data get loaded from uh, s3 into all these uh, tables So uh, let's see the count of events table. Okay, so if you see uh, the counts of event table, 10 million records got ingested in just say, uh, before creating the pipeline itself, it got uh, 10 million records ingested in less than five or six seconds. So you can see the power of uh, the data ingestion here. So which is one of the great feature of single store, which is uh, the ultra fast uh, ingestion capability. So I do have uh, ingested the data into other tables as well, campaigns, networks and platforms as well. Uh, if you can see all the all the records has been populated and, and been migrated into single store database now. So there's uh, one more table called uh, uh, pipelines underscore batches underscore summary where you can see all the uh, pipelines which is running and which what state it is whether it's in in progress or succeeded you know uh, and what is the batch time it took what is the time it took to ingest the data how many rows streamed if you see 10 million rows have been streamed in this uh, this pipeline pipeline load events which got loaded into the events table which we just saw now and a lot of other metadata information which will be useful for debugging uh, uh, if something uh, something goes wrong in the pipeline so I just run the few queries uh, to see uh, uh, how how it performs i just ran a query uh, which uh, fetches the uh, country and the corresponding counts uh, with the event name called click so it just took around 520 milliseconds uh, uh, in the second run it took around 294 milliseconds which is very fast against the against the table with 10 million records and you can also see uh, you can also see uh, the explain in the profile for this query so if you see uh, in the right hand side there's a there's a button called visual explain if it, there's a drop down if you click on the profile so you can analyze this query uh, in detail so if you click on each of the steps these are the steps that have been executed uh, while uh, while retrieving the results and these are the steps which has been performed internally so if you uh, click on each of the steps it it gives the entire uh, metrics of uh, of the details and you can actually go and do some uh, performance optimization there and see where actually the query is being slowing down uh, if there is any any uh, long running uh, queries or slow running queries so in this example 94 percent of the time it's the uh, time is uh, taken uh, for hash group by uh, operation here but uh, overall it just took around 
200 to uh, you know uh, 300 less than 300 under 300 milliseconds right so this is uh, this is about uh, how we load the data from s3 into a uh, single store now i'm going to quickly demonstrate uh, replicate tool a replicate is as i said it's a man in the middle which helps in connecting the source database in my, in this case my source database is postgresql and the destination is a single store so i've already created a, a postgres uh, a sql instance if you see this uh, in the screen uh, i already have connected the postgres uh, connection with the db viewer which is a tool to connect uh, a lot of lot of databases right so i have a database called test underscore demo let me see i have two tables in this database uh, the database has 37000 records and uh, i have one more table with uh, test underscore t i have four records here Okay, let's uh, quickly go ahead and uh, do a replicate. Before doing the replicate, I will uh, I I've already created uh, the tables, uh, the databases for the replicate. So let me drop that database. If you see, there is a test demo public and IO replicate. I am going to drop these two tables uh, because I uh, once we uh, use a replicate, uh, it automatically creates a database. Uh, creates the tables ingest the data in from postgres into single store now if i see show databases uh, just to show you there is no uh, no uh, database called test underscore demo underscore public once you run the replicate tool uh, the database is going to get created in this cluster okay let's go ahead and uh, and run the replicate replicate is just a simple java based tool uh, which is uh, uh, which is which is used to uh, which which works with the yaml files connects uh, you know um, uh, connects using source and destination and some other yamls for filter files and mapper files as well right so uh, let me go and run the replicate command give me a minute please so this is the command which i am trying uh, running uh, with the replicate so there is a I have given now the Delta snapshot mode to run the replicate in Delta snapshot mode. There are three different modes. One is snapshot mode, which does a bulk load, one time load from PostgreSQL into single store. And there is a full mode, which does a full complete one time load uh, in the first phase. And and uh, and whenever you do a change uh, data in PostgreSQL, it, in a real time, it synchronizes uh, from uh, PostgreSQL into single store. The delta snapshot is a near real time uh, for every 10 milliseconds uh, data as soon as you do a change in in, in the postgresql it gets replicated into single store let me go ahead and run the uh, replicate command yeah this this is the window of uh, of the dashboard uh, of the replicate so the it shows the the data has been migrated uh, started migrating from postgres to memsql so if you see in just just 10 to 15 seconds the the database the database in the postgresql has been migrated into uh, into single store we saw in the in the in the postgres uh, sql database we had a table called annual enterprise which has 37 uh, uh, thousand records and uh, test underscore table has around four records which has been completely migrated uh, very easily very simple and let's go and quickly real quick check uh, my cluster let's do a show databases i should have a database called yes test demo underscore public so uh, i'll use this data database to see the tables yeah so if you see the tables has been created annual enterprise survey and test underscore t and this is the metadata table which is used for a heartbeat table okay let's see the count of uh, this table all 37 records has been uh, has been migrated replicated from postgres equal to single store real quick let's go uh, ahead and do some changes in the in the postgres equal right uh, i'm just trying to insert one record uh, uh, in the in the test underscore table t test underscore t table which now uh, right now we have only four records right let's uh, quickly check that as well so here I'm demonstrating the CDC capability. So I have four records. I'm going to ingest one record, insert one record from the PostgreSQL. One record has been ingested. So and if you see uh, in the 
dashboard uh, it's going to quickly change yes if you see one record has been applied now the incoming changes has already been applied let's go to a single store cluster now and see whether this uh, uh, this record has been in replicated now the count is four i'll rerun this query again the count should be five yes it is the see uh, the as soon as you do a change in the in the postgres uh, uh, that is immediately in a real time has been synchronized into uh, into single store database uh, that is it from the uh, from the demonstration uh, thank you so much over to you suki Thank you, Rakesh. Sorry, um, just uh, just bringing up my uh, unmute button. Uh, I think we're going to have to miss some of the questions because we're uh, we're actually running short on uh, on time. Um, I'm going to jump back into the uh, back into the presentation if uh, if I can. Let me know when you can see my screen. Um, we do we do have some questions, but we'll uh, kind of post those out to the people that have responded. Uh, people that have asked the questions will respond directly to them. Um, Diogo, shall I hand back over to you just to kind of wrap up? Um, but thank you everybody for joining. Thank you so much for listening and a great uh, demonstration, Rakesh. Thank you so much for that. Thank you, Suki. Um, I want to thank Suki and Rakesh for the presentation. Thank you for attending the webinar today. We will send you a follow-up email with today's recording and a link to our managed service free trial. We are offering each user uh, $500 in credit so you can start a full workload today. Um, lastly, check out our other virtual events at singlestar.com slash events. Thank you for joining us and have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you.